Thank you very much for giving me an opportunity to make a presentation today. My name is Hideharu Yamamoto from JPMAEWG IWG Deputy Topic Leader of ICH7E17. I'd like to talk about the further consideration on the pooling strategies from March Regional Green Card Trial that includes statistical consideration based on the ICH7E70 guideline. This slide shows take-home messages. E17 status usefulness of pre-specified pooling but does not mandate pooling. Depending on our knowledge of effect modifiers, what we can do may be different. Don't stop thinking at the level of the country or the geographical region. Do continue to explore more specific effect modifiers. Pooling strategies may give a gateway to such explorations. To make your decisions more scientific, keep, ask, keep asking what is effect modifier and make every effort to explain the benefit risk to your nation using effect modifier. This slide showed the outline of in my talk. What is pooling strategies introduced by E17? How to pool? What can be done at the planning stage and analysis stage? How to look at the MRCT result? And finally, what we want to know. Before explaining the pooling strategies, I will outline ICH E17. What is new in ICH E17 guideline? The term MRCT, Regional Clinical Trial, is not new. It is in use since the 2000. MRCT in the past has focused on simultaneous development. The focus of E17 is on simultaneous global development and registration. MRCT is meant to be at the programming level. These MRCT can be conducted at phase 1, 2, or 3, meant to reduce the burden of the conducting bridging studies, will enable simultaneous global development and near simultaneous registration. E17 introduced of the new concept called as pool region. The scope of ICH E17 is following. E17 is focused on the planning and design of the MRCT. Analysis and interpretation of the MRCT results are out of scope. However, high-level guidance is provided on the planning and the beta interpretation in basic principle, sample size planning, and statistical analysis planning. Operational aspects are out of scope. How to consult with the various regulatory authorities is out of scope, but there is a reference in 2.1.3, close reference to multiple ICH guidelines, especially to ICH E5. E17 is trying to convey that Point to consider for successful MRCT rather than a single solution. Differences among the region are nothing special. Such differences are not a barrier against the conduct of MRCT in most cases. Not finding differences, but identifying differences which affect treatment effect is of paramount importance. How to manage such differences in order to conduct MRCTs or participate in MRCTs? E17 states seven basic principles. Firstly, strategic use of MRCTs can increase the efficiency of drug development. MRCTs may enable simultaneous submission of marketing authorization applications, allowing early access to new drugs worldwide. Also, MRCT may generally become the preferred option for the investigating a new drug for which regulatory submission is planning in multiple regions. 
It means E70 promotes MRCT as much as possible. However, as it cannot be recommended in any case, provisions have been added. There was a discussion that it may be difficult to plan MRCT in case that the distribution in figure 2 in E17 guideline are far apart. There's no overlap. So the first principle says advantage of MRCTs. Secondly, the intrinsic and extrinsic factors important to drug development program should be identified early. It said the importance of identified factor that affect the result area in development, if possible, prior to the confirmatory MRCT. The leading candidate of this factor is a pro prognostic factor, and the next candidate is a pr predictive factor. The information about them sh should also be collected during the confirmatory trial for evaluation of their impact on treatment effect. It sets the importance of collecting information on the factors as mentioned above. It cannot be studied unless it is collected. However, it is usually patient factors, instant factors, that are collected. Extrinsic factors such as the medical environment are not normally collected by EDC. The second principle says the importance of early, early identification of important ethnic factors. Sadly, the MRCTs are planning under the assumption that the treatment effect applies to the entire target population, particularly to the region included in the trial. It means this assumption is written based on the statistical considerations, entire target population does not mean the wild patient of cases actually participating, but rather than the population used in the context of the statistics, that is, it is the population for the statistical inference and the statistical assumption of the stage of planning the trial. The third principle says the MRCT premise and unique feature of the MRCT in the context of the March regional. Fourthly, pre specified pooling of regions or subpopulations based on the established knowledge about similarities may help provide flexibility in the sample size allocation to the region. In a strictly described context, we use homogeneity, heterogeneity for the similarity of a population and use consistency, inconsistency for similarity of result from multiple populations. This fourth principle is deeply related to how the region should be defined based on the factor of similarity, whether to use the pool subpopulation regardless of country or region. What the based on the established knowledge is added is based on the idea that the stratification factor, including a region, that are used in randomization and in primary analysis should be established as it is. The fourth principle says that advantages of pre-specified pooling strategy. Fifthly, a single primary analysis approach for hypothesis testing and estimation of the overall treatment effect should be planned. It is, un it is natural that the primary analysis should be single to guide the result, that the result of the overall treatment effect is global common result. However, it is not a single method when different requests are made among the regulatory authorities, such as non-inferiority margin. 
and the structured explanation to examine the consistency of treatment effect across region and subpopulation should be planned. It means the consistency assessment is the secondary purpose of, of MRCT, not to confirm multiple argument. Therefore, that it does not conclude from the one analysis result, but by examining at many sections, it is necessary to search to build up evidence while confirming that these findings support the same conclusion. The fifth principle says the importance of the planning and structured explanation for consistency. The basic principle number six is that the maintaining a high quality of study design and conduct is very important. Data gathered by method and procedure, procedure that should not be corrected should not be placed on the table discussing the result of the MRCT. Such data includes serious deviation of protocol, DCP violation, and research fraud. The sixth principle sets importance of ensuring high quality in line with ICH E6. Finally, Efficient communication among the sponsors and the regulatory authorities is encouraged at the planning stage of MRCTs. It means there is an intention to the recommend communication between the regulatory authorities, not image of one sponsor versus multiple regulatory authorities. In fact, we have sentence at the end of the section 2.1.3 as a following. Inter-authorities scientific discussion are encouraged to the allow the scientific discussion between the regulators for the purpose of international harmonization approval requirement on the examination is recommended. The seventh principle says the recommendation of early stage communication for MRCT success. That covers the lucky seven basic principles. Let's move on to the pooling strategies and sample size allocation to region. Why important in the design of non MRCT? Intrinsic and or extrinsic factors may impact the treatment effect. Preconsideration and mitigation of large differences across the region can support adequate interpretability of the result on MRCT in different regions. Preconsideration of regional variability should be reflected in the trial design to lead to the successful MRCT. How to identify intrinsic and extrinsic factors which may affect the treatment effect and mitigation strategies? There are three steps to identify ethnic factors affecting the treatment effect. The first step is to collect the available information about the intrinsic and extrinsic factors which may affect the treatment effect. The second step is to examine the impact of these intrinsic and extrinsic factors for the drug development based on the collected information. The third step is to de decide which intrinsic and extrinsic factor may affect the treatment effect and should be reflected in the study design. Overall sample size is determined based on the test of the primary hypothesis with data from the all enrolled regions. Overall treatment effect applies to entire target population and is clinically relevant. The sample size allocation to regions should be determined such that clinically relevant differences in treatment effect among regions can be Variated without substantially increasing the sample size. 
the expected variability of the primary outcome variables based on combining data across region. This concept expands on principle 3 and 4 of the ic 17 MRCT should be planned to include an evaluation of the consistency of treatment effect among regions. If clinically relevant differences are observed, the MRCT is a unique opportunity to collect information on factors that may be explained in differences. Regional allocation should have a scientific basis rather than arbitrary target. Support the evaluation of consistency, provide the information needed to support meaningful interpretation of the results for regulatory decision making in different regions. The definition of pool region and pooled subpopulation is following. The pooled region is pooling some geographical regions countries or regulatory region at the planning stage, for example, North America. And pool subpopulation is pooling in a subset of the subject from particular region, which similarity defi defines subject from other region whose members share one or more historic or external factor important for the drug development program at the planning stage. The science-based strategic, strategic pooling can bring the efficiency and knowledge to enable regulatory decision-making, expanding on the exploration of factors. Specified pooling of region or subpopulation may help provide flexibility in sample size allocation and facilitate the assessment of the consistency and support regulatory decision making. The pooling strategies should be justified with the distribution of the intrinsic and extrinsic factors and specified in the study protocol and the statistical analysis plan if applicable. We have five types of sample size allocation to regions. First is proportional allocation. Allocation of subject to region in proportion to size of region and disease prevalence. Second is equal allocation. Allocation of equal number of subjects to each region. Third is preparation of effect. Allocation of subject to one or more region based on preserving some specified population of the overall treatment effect. Fourth is local significance. Allocation of the sufficient number of subjects to be able to achieve significant result with in each region. Fifth is fixed minimum number. Allocation of the fixed minimum number of subjects to a region. E70 guideline states that balance between proportional and equal allocation is recommended to ensure that recruitment is feasible and able to be completed in timely fashion but also to provide sufficient information to evaluate the drug in its regional context. Can the overall result from MRCT be applied to each country? This may be a very important question for each regulatory authority. The sample size of countries participating in MRCT may vary. Some countries are large and the other countries are small. Regulated authorities would be interested in the responsible for the drug's benefit and risk for their nation. However, it is difficult for any country to obtain high evidence conclusion from their own data alone in the MRCT. You may want to look at 
your country's data and compare it with the overall data of the MRCT. However, it may be more dangerous for countries with smaller sample size to rely on comparing their own result versus the overall result. What can be done? In general, treatment effects, including efficacy and safety, vary from person to person. When you look at the population, for example, patient population in your country, you may observe different treatment effects among populations. Why could such a thing happen? One of the big reasons is a phenomenon known as effect mod modification. The E17 guideline states intrinsic or extrinsic ethnic factor which may affect treatment effect and so on. This long wording is one of the key words of E17 and I would like to use it repeatedly but the wording is very long to say. So I'd like to use a general term effect mod modifiers or EM in short in my presentation. Effect modification occurs when the magnitude of the treatment effect differs depending on the level of third variable effect modif modifiers that may be the region or country or more specifically one or more intrinsic and or extrinsic ethnic factors. Without effect modification, the treatment effect would be similar for all human and does not vary by region, race, or other ethnic factors. However, in practice, some effect modification is often present, and as a result, regional differences are observed. Why consider pooling? As previously shown, it is difficult for any country to obtain high evidence conclusion from their own data alone in the MRCT. The next best thing we can do is to consider pooling. E17 introduces the concept of the pool region and pool subpopulation as pooling strategies. E17 states like this in dotted rectangle, pre specified pooling of the region or subpopulation may help provide flexibility in the sample size allocation to region facilitate the assessment of the consistency in treatment effect across region and support regulatory decision making. Each 17 states usefulness of the pre-specified pooling, but please note that E17 does not man mandate, mandate the pooling. What are the pooling strategies? Both pool region and pool subpopulation are constructed based on the commonality in the effect modifier or in those distribution. The figure in the middle of this slide is the figure 2A in the 17 guideline. This figure illustrates the situation where severity of this is effect modifier and the distribution are different among the re region. In this situation, we consider commonality at the country level or geographical region level. Every participating country region has its own distribution of the severity, and we may pull country region with similar distribution of the severity. This is a pool region. On the other hand, if we consider the commonality at the patient subject level, every participating subject has his or her own disease severity, and we may pull sub subject with similar disease severity. This is a pooled subpopulation based on the disease severity. The pooling strategy focuses on the effect modification 
requires only and does not take geographical proximity into the consideration. So, pool region is a group of countries with similar effect mod modifier or its distribution. The grouping may be different depending on which factor are considered effect modifier. If both factor X and factor Y are considered effect modifiers, we may have three pool regions like this. If factor X is recognized as effect modifier, but there is insufficient evidence of effect modification for factor Y, the figure will be crushed onto the X axis and we would like to we would have have two pool regions like this. The same applies to factor Y. The pooling considering more than two effect modifiers is more complex and requires clustering or other multivariate analysis approaches. This slide shows the three step for pooling. The first step is identifying effect modifiers from early trials or existing data, prognostic factors, predictive factors. Second step is considering the extent to which these factors may explain the anticipated variability among region or subpopulation. The third step is defining pool region and or subpopulation based on the similar distribution of the identified factors. Please note that the process to determine these factors for pooling is similar to that used to determine stratification factor or covariate in the primary analysis. There is a hierarchy of the effect modifiers based on how many factors may be inherent in the effect modifiers. Please see the bottom of the figure. Geographical region, regulatory region, is a mixture of so many ethnic factors. Although in truth, there are effect modifiers that can be better explain the regional differences because those have not been identified we may observe regional differences. So we could say geographical region, regulatory region as a surrogate of true effect modifiers. The ethnicity gives another aspect but still may be surrogate of true effect modifiers. Instinct, extrinsic ethnic factors summar summarized in the ICS is five guideline are relatively specific but to still be a surrogate of more specific factor. The top of the pyramid is a specific factor that may much better explain different treatment responses. E17 implies a learning process of effect modifiers where we need to determine the weight of the evidence of the effect modification. Exploring effect modifiers is a program level consideration. As knowledge is accumulated, we would narrow down the candidate of the effect modifiers. For example, at the early stage of the drug development, we may have insufficient or no information of effect modifiers and we may be considered different responses at country, region level, or ethnicity level tentatively. But as knowledge is accumulated, we may be able to identify or determine more specific effect modifiers. Then we can consider pooling strategies based on more specific factors. It is important to continue to explore more specific effect modifiers like climbing the pyramid. 
A good example is easy FR mutation in Gifchenib case for non-small cell lung cancer. This, this example is included in the E70 training material mod module 2. There were no specific candidate of effect modifiers identified at the early stage. But in the phase 2 trials, race, gender, disease, and smoking history took the spotlight. Good responses in non-smoking Asia female were observed in adenocarcinoma. At last, it was shown that the true effect modifier was EGFR mutation and it was recognized that race, gender, and disease were surrogates of the true effect modifiers. This was an excellent story to tell the learning process of effect modifiers. And the other lesson learned was that the inclusion of the broad patient population was helpful for exploring effect modifiers. If Asian subject had not been included in the phase two trials, identification of effect modifier might be delayed. How can we apply pooling strategy to our real cases? Regarding knowledge of effect modifiers, there were various cases. This slide shows the simplified and the typical cases. In some cases, leftmost, we may have no idea of effect modifiers. In the next cases, we may have just candidate of effect modifiers and insufficient evidence available. In the next cases, factor A is likely, but factor B and C may be candidate of effect modifiers. In other cases, like most, factor A is definitely effect modifiers, but factor B and C may be just likely to be effect modifiers. Depending on our knowledge of effect modifiers, what we can do at the planning stage of MRCT and at the analysis of study result may be different. E17 recommends planning the structured explorations. We can consider the three steps of the analysis. This slide came from the training materials module 6. The first one is analysis for known known that is known result by known factors. The second one is known unknown that is by known factors but unexpected result. The third one is unknown unknown that is unexpected differences by unknown factors. These are ordering of our consideration and also the ordering of the weight of evidence regarding the findings from this analysis. All of these analyses contribute to overall credibility of the MRCT result. Overall credibility is to be evaluated from many angles like the right slide of this slide. The upper of this slide are the four examples shown on the previous slide. In the leftmost case, we have no idea about the effect modifier. In the rightmost cases, we know that the factor A is effect modifier and there is some evidence for other factors as well. The lower of this slide show that what we can do in each case. The more information about the effect modifier is known, the more analysis that can be planned and 
more findings that could provide strong evidence. Now that you understand what I explained, let's figure out how to look at the result of the MRCT. We first look at the overall result of the MRCT and then by region results. Regions may be geographical, regulatory, or pool region, depending on knowledge of, the, of effect modification. When we look at the regional results from MRCT, we would look at them from this viewpoint. Are the results consist among regions? Is there a region where the results differ greatly? In other words, do any region show results that differ from other regions? If differences are observed, is it clinically relevant? If a region includes more than one country, we may look at the country-level consistency as well. The viewpoint for looking at the result for each country included in a certain region is the same as the viewpoint for looking at the regional result. But please note that sample size of each country may be smaller than the regional one uncertainty increased in interpreting the result. What we want to know? The regulatory authorities will determine whether the benefit-risk balance is accept acceptable by the estimating the efficacy and the safety of the drug in the patient population in their own country or region. Do not rely too much of on your country's data that may be too small to judge approval. To make your decision more scientific, keep asking what is effect modifier and make every effort to explain in the benefit risk to your nation using effect modifier. Conclusions E70 states usefulness of pre-specified pooling, but does not mandate pooling. Depending on our knowledge of effect modifiers, what we can do may be different. Don't stop thinking at the level of the country or the geographical region. Do continue to explore more specific effect modifiers. Pooling strategies may give a gateway to such explorations. If possible, we should aim to at constructing patient level prediction model that would be the useful tool for estimating a distribution of treatment effect for any patient population all over the world. Thank you for your attention.